<laughs> uh, all right, guys. Um, I have Orn Sloan here on the podcast. I came across an article from Cahar Cook, Cahar O'Kane, sorry, uh, from the Irish News, and um, uh, the article was written on Orn and his 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 dealings with drinking, gambling, and depression and stuff. So I actually asked Orn if he could be on on an episode here so we can talk and highlight those issues and you know the physical side of things and the mental side of things and how you deal with injuries and, and how and he'll tell you more of his his story and what sort of um, things he was dealing with but uh, Orn um, I want to welcome you on to the episode and uh, if you can uh, can you let people know a little bit about yourself um, tell me a bit more about your background because um, where your love for Gaelic and stuff had started and sort of then will lead on to the injuries and where you are now with everything. Is that all right? No problem, Seamus. Just thanks for inviting me on. But I suppose it all is probably I'm from Dromore and <laughs> County Throne, a big, it's, <laughs> it's a big GEA community, like, you know, so yes. basically it's one of those places where there's no other sport you can play, like, you know, it's either GEA or nothing. And, I suppose you just got started in when you were young and around that five or six, like, you know, and it was always a big tradition within the family of a big GA history of everybody playing it. And I suppose you just, it was just, you followed on in the playing. Yes. And obviously, I suppose as it led on, like, you know, you, you, I, I was very lucky enough to be in, in my age group with some very good underage teams like we won we had a lot of success at underage mm-hmm. and progressed on so it always gave you that probably a bit of hunger and desire to continue to do because you were getting that taste of winning and you yes. just everybody everybody loves to win yes. so that kept the motivation there to keep going and obviously the end goal for everybody in the GA is to always embark on that probably senior career of your own club first and then Obviously, people, not everybody maybe, but a lot of ones have the potential to, you know, go on to play for their county someday maybe, you know. Mm-hmm. And I suppose it all started out there. Everything goes well. And I suppose, as you say, then you never, when the good days are going, you never see the bad days. And mm-hmm. it's, when the bad, it's when the bad days hit. Mm-hmm. That's when you have to probably reconsider things and it's probably... It's probably the coping mechanisms that I didn't have till when the bad days hit, which really led me into my struggles, probably. Yeah. And like uh, in the article that Kaha wrote, uh, you had a lot, you have a big connection. You called them the chieftains, didn't you? Uh, uh, aye, the chieftains. <laughs> aye, the, the Give us a bit more about so, them. Uh. So, aye, so basically, my, my mother is actually from Ballygolly, the club, the football club would be Eric Lakeern, and they're an our massive club like you know and then yeah with like i we would actually come up against a lot of my cousins yes. from marigold care and we played against them you know so you know rivalries there and slagging and all that different stuff and then my father kevin would have played when he grew up and then he was actually would have did a four or five year stint as chairman mm-hmm. there and then obviously my eyeless bra nail is plays for the throne senior team yeah. So he does, and Rory would have been on maybe on a bit of the throne seniors too at a time, and then of an hour, Robert Hearn who plays too. So it's just football, 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 and there's. <laughs> it's, it's, we getting away from No, well, the only the only topic at the minute that's been discussed is the coronavirus, but besides that, it's football, <laughs> football, football. So it is. A very good man. Um, uh, so you have a lot of experience in the background. Captain under 16s, uh, you play for the seniors and the under 21s are there more too. And uh, this went on, they won the Ulster champion, Club Championship as, as well. Aye, won on. Yeah. It, prob- it probably was probably the, obviously before, I never actually got to participate in it because it mm-hmm. be played, be played off in the new year and I had suffered my second cruciate injury prior to that in December 2018 and then that's probably where it all start, started off. I would have always titled it as 7th of December 2018 is when the struggles actually started to hit because right. the, the, the fellas actually went on to win, as you said, the Ulster Under-21 Club Championship and that was a big thing because they were playing against the, the other best teams in Ulster and 
there there are things that don't come around all the no. time. You just don't you just don't know when you're ever going to ever get that chance to do it again. I was actually lucky enough when we won our under sixteens, we actually host Ulster under sixteens our club in memory of uh, Paul McGure who died playing for the Troll Miners in 1998. And I was lucky enough to be fortunate to captain our team there. So I knew what it was like to play on the Ulster stage. But as I always said, when you're, when you're going well, you want more. You want to play on them big stages. And it, yes. for just to be kind of wiped out within weeks of it starting, it was obviously gotten. And, you know, uh-huh. coming up to Christmas, it's supposed to be a happy time. But you yeah. were looking down the line of an hour surgery and a long journey ahead of you again of rehab yes I because like it's not a like a lot of the issues highlighted in this here sort of conversation will be the drinking drugs or drinking gambling and and depression right but they have that injury say to a lot of people even my own home club with Craig Van if I can name a few players like Gary McLaughlin who've done his shoulder and played for day day as well and the seniors and the minors and stuff so there's a lot of injuries there uh, with people yeah and how that can impact you. Um, yeah. So um, there's many people like that out there. Um, and so going back to your very first injury, can you just sort of give us the timeline of when this sort of happened? And so basically, I actually did. It would have been back in May, May 2016. I actually did my first cruciate or yes. anterior cruciate ligament rupture in a minor game when I was right. about 17. So it was on my, on my left knee. And mm-hmm. it was obviously I had to go through the surgery and all and the recovery process and rehab for about 10 to 12 months. And at the more probably frustrating point or probably thing about it was that all went grand. I really enjoyed that process and got on with it well. But the more probably, as I said, frustrating process was that before the second one, which happened on the 7th of December 2018, was that after the first one, I felt like I was getting back to myself in the yeah. Gaelic football because it just doesn't, o- doesn't happen overnight with injuries I got there. It takes mm-hmm. confidence, skills and everything. It just, yes. uh, as I say, it's, it, it's a process. It just, yeah. you, have to, you have to work with it. Mm-hmm. And as I say, I just felt in myself, I was just getting there back to the stage where I wanted to be and it just all kind of, just went bang again and then on the 7th of December it was like you got up once and you'd been hit twice and knocked down again you know yes yes and it's it's mentally soul destroying not just yes. I don't even I don't say these injuries are like for me the physically I can do it physically yes but it's the it's the mental side it's actual I can do all exercises I could do any exercise I could lift any weights I uh-huh. could push, you know it's but it's getting yourself to do it getting you know Dry, making yourself go to the gym, yes. making yourself go to the pitch and do the runs that you need to do to progress on. It's that kind of stuff. And, it's, yeah. you know, probably the more frustrating part was that I'm only, I've only turned there, 21 there, March 24th. And I suppose the thing is, you see all your friends being able to do everything normally and you're looking mm-hmm. at them saying, why, why can I not do that? Why am I always the one that's, sitting on the sideline having to rehab and just face number of months out without playing and it's just it just builds up and builds up and just gets sometimes just mentally it's mental torture so it is so the first time first time you did it like uh, uh, the process uh physically as you said you could you could do all the training you can do all the rehab you can do all that stuff that's that was easy did you find it hard going to the gym then no to kind of do the rehab? No, no. Not, not in the first one. The first yes. one, I suppose it was that, it was the initial thing of not knowing what it was going to be like. So you yes. were just giving it, you were giving it everything. Whereas ah. the second one, you, there was a whole build up of things. The second one, as I say, just came on the eve of the, this Ulster under 21 club championship. I got mm-hmm. the surgery done two weeks prior to the final. So, you know, it was all like, it was just all came at the wrong time and yes. I suppose it just was one thing led after an hour and it was just slowly just eating away at me. Like. Uh, so it was. Uh, and obviously then you're, see the second time then, your coping mechanisms, you do that mentally, what did you kind of go to? Um, what was it? Can you sort of talk a wee bit more about that? 
as well obviously like I was in I was a second year student in Belfast like yeah. so I was living up in Belfast in the Holy Lands like you know and yeah obviously like th- when the boys were going down for training you weren't going down for training because you knew you were injured and mm-hmm. you didn't want to go down for training down, because it wasn't it's a, an hour or more away from us to go back down to the moor and it was just easier for me to stay up in Belfast and as I said in the article, yeah, cling on to people nearly till you were clinging on to fake friends to just get a night out in Belfast every night of the week. And I suppose I turned to probably alcohol, probably, yeah. you know, I wouldn't have said it was a raging alcoholic or anything, but it was just, it was a, alcohol is a depressant and it yes. was just, you did, I was taking probably a lot more than I would have used to be. Yes. And then obviously the the gambling was I would have never have said I would have always said like there was always there was a problem with the gambling but I was always able to control it to an extent where I was never going to the extent where I had to borrow money or anything like you know it, it just got stopped at the right time yeah. but it was just it was an hour added factor that wasn't needed so it was it was an hour stress on the on the the head like you know and I suppose probably just the sport like majority like when I the sport played the big part but the like the drinking the gambling probably added in just yeah. and so, as I say weren't needed yes and so and I'm just saying I'm not picking on students but I mean the drinking kind of can be like a student norm and then the gam I don't know about much about the gambling but I'm sure like it's just seen as, oh, well, we'll throw in a wee bet here. And, you know, maybe you're in that environment and it just sort of snowballs. Or what do you think? That's, that's it. I know. I would always say now, like, you know, I'm actually, when I be in contact with my therapist there, you know, I would always say to them now, I'd be like, you know, if students are feeling the, their best or not in the best form, like, my personal advice from my own experience is that, like, staying up in the Holy Lands isn't, it wouldn't be the right choice for them. You know, it wouldn't like even pursuing a career in college at that time wouldn't be the right advice. I'd be saying, you know, take a wee while out, just get the mind, the the body, and all the rest, and get healthier again, and then go at it. Because when you're not in the right state of mind, aren't healthy, as I say, like Belfast uh, for students isn't the right place. Because as you say, like you know, you've got it's that, there is that drinking culture it's as you say it's the norm and then obviously when you're down in the pubs there's the racing and all football on like you mm-hmm. know when it, they're living away from home yeah. so they are so they're kind of living their own life as such yes. and they can flutter a wee bit but it's it's all right fluttering a wee bit and then it happens the next day and the next day and it just becomes the norm from monday mm-hmm. to friday up there every week you know and then then you know what you're maybe it was a five or one week it's a tenner the next week, it's 20 the next week, you know, it's, it's, it slowly starts to build up, like, you yes. know. So and does, this was and sort of, in, control. this was, the, this was a, the starting period, the second year of university, and you had uh, started drinking more, gambling more. Um, so between this time and the last time you did the, the cruciate or the ACL, what, what was, what way was your mindset? Like, did you go, see, after the second time, did you go back playing football for a wee while? Did you, did you come on? Uh, after the second time, so, as I say, like, uh, a cruciate for, a, like, a sport that needs, like, demands, yeah, like, yeah. you know, that real demands on the body, you need to be giving it a good, at least 10 and a half months. Yes. To, they even say about 12 months, you need to be giving it the full year to mm. be fully ready to return to competitive sport. Mm-hmm. But, the fact that I was in such a bad state of mind and my just my head was boggled as such, you know, yeah. I actually went back within about six and a half, seven months. I went back training. Yeah. I went back training into contact with the boys at about six months. Did about a month of good training, got through it. Mm-hmm. Then I came on in a reserve game for a half, got through that all right. Then it was the following week I came on to play for the seniors. After my first time with, with within about a year, with about ten minutes in, I went to push off, and just got felt the wobble in the knee, you know, and I played on for a couple of minutes, but I knew I had to come off, like you know, so only lasted about 
20 mm-hmm. minutes, like, you know, and about 10, about five or 10 minutes were actually good, where uh-huh. the other about 10, you were kind of in pain and discomfort, like, you know, yes. so, as I say, leaving the field that day, I knew kind of, I was in bother, so yeah, yeah. there was, there was potentially, the, the potential of, that it re-ruptured and uh-huh. like that's as I say that's what it turned out to be like you know you scored three but you scored three points before before that did you I, <laughs> I, well I, three points before that but I nearly two nearly well two, there was nobody really around me so even a couple of them were a couple of them were at the time where I was in discomfort you know but yes. but um no definitely as I say it was uh, yeah, there was not much movement but I see it's actually I would have been that you know, that person that would have played through it because my actual first one, my first one back in 2016, it happened mm. me five minutes into the into the very start of the game and I played on. Till I actually played on with one leg, basically, Jeez. until until about 10 minutes left. You know, so it was that kind of all or nothing thing, you know, you know, with mm. me, like, you know, when it come to the, the GA end of it for the club, like, you know, so, yes. but, now, obviously, as I say, when you went through a stage of like depression, you know, and went till you know, obviously till the brink, you know, you see, and then attend therapists and talk it all out. You see a different picture. Hey, your whole, you know, world changes. And, yes. But for for a half there, me yeah. like as such. Yeah. Did you? Would you say your de- depression and stuff really kicked in after the second injury, or were you, were you more I, aware of it maybe after the third, or what? What? what what's your thoughts there? I would have been. I as you say, I would have been more aware of it after the third because I went finished second year in college and I was went starting back in the my third year of college and so staying mm-hmm. up again. But the, obviously the drinking was continuing. But as I say, when the drinking was continuing, you were waking up the next morning press not wanting to get out of bed lying in bed uh, maybe two three o'clock in the day you know missing breakfast lunch yeah afternoon meals like you know but you were ta- like the thing was you're t- you were telling your friends you're putting on a fake show you're telling your friends that you were just hung over mm-hmm. and you couldn't make class but the fact was that you didn't want to get out of bed uh-huh. and you just wanted to pull the sheets back over and that's what i said like you know the whole difference now is that you're actually getting back out of bed now with a spring in your step. You're looking forward to getting out of bed. Whereas back then, when you were going through the troubled time, you just wanted to pull the sheets over. Like, you uh-huh. just were making every excuse not yes. to get out of your bed. Like, you know, and yeah. like, I, you know, it was the, obviously the drink was there, but that was kind of the fact I was saying, Gee, I'm just not I'm dying here. Like, I'm hungover. Mm-hmm. I just mm-hmm. can't physically get up. But it was the fact that the depression was doing it because. Like a lot of people probably like who haven't suffered with wouldn't know, but like yeah. depression is a it's a slow burner. That would have prob that would have kicked in to me like probably from that start of that year from January nineteen right through until December nineteen. You know, so it was a full year. Like so, yeah. it's a slow as I say, it's a slow burner, and it it just you know it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight. Like you know, so it doesn't no. it, it it doesn't go over. It will not go away overnight if you don't seek the right help and support like for it. Yes, yes. And now you see there you were on you up at Belfast up in the Holy Lands and you know you're with friends, you're with uh, roommates and stuff and you know do you, st- do you still feel alone even being in that environment or how does it how does it kind of work? Can you sort of develop that a wee bit more to get on the I sp- like as to the mean like the the the, the, the fellas I was sharing were from Dromore like you know from mm. And they they were playing Gaelic, so the season was still going on at that September October time. So they were going down for training on the Tuesday nights. So it was me being left in the house of my own, like you know. And it's just yeah. you know yourself when you're when you're on your own and you have that time to think. You overthink, yeah. You know because you have you have that free time. So I probably turned to the fact that that I was overthinking. So I turned to the fact of going down to the pub, drinking it out. You know, and getting drunk and just trying to kill a couple of hours, you know, and yes. give it's probably giving you it gives you that high for a wee while, but it's mm-hmm. the it's the low after yes. it, which is the real problem, you know. And mm-hmm. I would have, as I say, I would have knew there was definitely probably around September two thousand and nineteen when I went back from a third year in college, 
I would have knew there was something wrong. Yeah, yeah. You nearly would have, but you just couldn't really put your hand on it, what it was, and you just kind of nearly let it go on because before September 19, you you weren't in the greatest mood, but you just thought, is this normal? Does is this happen to everybody, you know? But it's yeah. like that kind of way. You just, you have to kind of, now looking back, if you had just nearly, if somebody had actually just shocked you and said, you're not yourself, maybe something would have happened, like, you know, but yes. it's, it's hindsight's a great thing. Like, yes, you know and, I, and it wasn't until, well, it says an article that you went on holiday with a friend and then you kind of talked more I, about I, on July, that was July, that July 19, like, no, like none of my friends would have knew about the problems I was having and with the gambling and how it was affecting me, like, you know, because even my, your closest friends would have said to you now, like, now they would say to you, like, you know, people seen wee things, you know, yeah. but just didn't want to say anything because they, they were afraid of maybe upsetting me or something yeah. like that, you know, they just, now they say, like, you know, you weren't yourself back then, you just, you were, you were acting differently, it wasn't the normal orn, you know, and uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would say that myself too, like, you know, 2019's gone now, but, like, 2019 wasn't the real Orange Sludden of through Orange Sludden, you know, yes. as such. So, but and what we things now, did you think that they noticed that was different? That you weren't able to have the crack, or what was the thing? I that they, that's I you, that's like like you know I know like no me now from the first couple of months in 2020 compared to then like just interacting like you know when you're in the like say the you we friend WhatsApps or Snapchat groups like you know you weren't interacting with the way you used to throwing in an odd comment you were just letting it all go by not even opening them you're just yeah. opening them and closing them again and wee yeah. bits of that because the people notice like you know you just yeah. weren't yourself you know but probably the difference was i had a lot of ones would say you had a you have a like a, a brave face I, I did i was able to put on a brave mask like you know when i was out on the street I was able to portray a happy self, but inside me, it was all probably crashing down slowly. Mm-hmm. So it was. How did you it know? come? How did it come to whenever you were in, in holiday with your mates? How did actually that conversation actually come up? That that you sort of spilled. It, it was kind of like I don't even know what it was about. You know, I I can't even remember. Probably there was a wee bit of probably drink fueled in it. You know, and <laughs> I suppose it, it yeah. was. I don't. I can't even. As I say, I can't even remember what we we were even chatting about. But it, next thing, it just all came out that I just kind of it was just building up, building up yeah. within me, you know. And I was like, you know, here lads, I'm not just like I have a bit of an issue with it. the yamlin, like you know. And I knew myself beforehand about you know April May time. I made a couple of ventures in April. I was way till. I went to the Irish Grand National and then May I was in Down Royal at the students' day out, like, you know, and I, not even them days, there was days, like, just, there was nights you were going to bed, like, as Kihar had said in his article, what I had said to him, like, there was nights you were going to bed putting bets on hockey and basketball, <laughs> which I wouldn't have no real interest in, or yes. Brazilian football, like, you know, and <laughs> you, were near, you, were, you were nearly hoping for a miracle the, te- the next morning you woke up that there was going to be a load of money in your account you know yeah, and it yeah, was just yeah. it was it was madness but it was the mm-hmm. fact that you know your head the head wasn't right mm-hmm. and it was just it, it ha- the head was telling you you had to do it to mm-hmm. keep you content you know and yeah. I suppose if I hadn't went when I went to bed if I hadn't have did that I wouldn't have been content with myself yeah. that I, you know that kind of way so Doing that made me content going to bed that maybe I had a chance of winning something when I woke up in the morning, you know. So yes. it's a it's a mad thing, and you know the uh, the the mind's a powerful powerful thing, like you know. So how did you feel after telling the boys? Did you feel like a weight was lifted off your shoulders, or how did definitely, you... definitely, like you know, I like you know one thing about me, like I I I show no shame, like you know, because it's mm-hmm. for me it's. It's better to get it out there because you know there's I know for a fact that there'll be other people like and our friends probably of my own that probably are suffering the same like you know and for me probably they say them words was a weight of their shoulders too because they're probably thinking geez I'm not just the only one that's yes. going through this here you know there's yes. there's others with me like you know and 
probably that's the whole thing about the way I wanted to promote my message. Like I just wanted to get it out there, like tell tell the public that you know it is okay to suffer, like you know, and because as I say, like you know, you you can't you can't save the world. You you're not going to help everybody, like you know. But if you know one, two, or three people read that and take something from it, then like you know, I'll be happy because it gives them the confidence to know that look at Oren Snowden, he suffered. Yes, yes. I'm going through a bit of the same, you know, and mm. you can get back. Yes. Up, you know, you you're not always going to be down. Like there is going to mm-hmm. be obviously there is the bad days, but. There's always that, mm-hmm. you know, slowly but surely, it's, as I call it, like baby steps. You know, yes. you're not going to take a mountain of steps in one day. It's all yes. wee small steps leading up to the big things, but uh, it can be done. Yeah. And maybe the first step whenever you come back from the holiday, and I said that Kahari, you said to him in the, in the article, was going to the, the addiction services. I how, yes. How, 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 how I, is that process? So I actually, I was. Like, you know, I chatted it over with my parents, like, you know, and, like, it was agreed, like, you know, they needed just a wee bit more help, like, you know, and I suppose I got, got we got in contact with um, Dunlewy Addiction Services, who I actually am still in contact with today. Every, I attend them monthly, you know, with my mm-hmm. counsellor, because yeah. this, this is good for me, like, you know, it's mm-hmm. good for her to see that I'm doing well, but went there, you know, for about a, it was a six-week period, you know, from... It was the end of probably August to end of, or the start of August, probably end of the start of me going back to uni in September. Did a bit of six-week phase then. Everything was going well then because at that time too, I was actually back playing a bit of football. So there was a wee bit of stress being lifted off the mind, you know, and mm-hmm. I suppose then I stopped that and then probably back to college then, as I say, started but staying up in college just didn't wasn't feeling it so turned to the traveling and the traveling was, was just probably physically and mentally just draining and I didn't know that probably as but then with that led to actually maybe a wee bit of g- gambling again then turned in because so Mary's is like there's a Ladbrook shop about not even about 50 or 100 yards just down yeah. the road and it there was them you were getting them we things like there was times where before you left you were with your friends you would have said to them oh, i'm just away here to the toilet but you were running down to the ladbrook shop for about five minutes throwing on a bet before you went home because yeah. you knew it probably was the only time you're going to get mm-hmm. you know so we things like that they just it started to slip again and then probably the mind just was it was an overload you know there was no real like there was no peace of mind at that stage. It was just all stress, you know, and yeah. probably then that all led probably built up to the real first major incident that in yeah. Halloween week, yes. like of two thousand and nineteen, like so it did. Um, that was where it was kind of going to there for the next sort of segment, you know, how it sort of built up to that point, and like again, what was kind of going through your mind because it's very. It's, it's it's graphic to a certain extent that the way it was put in the article, you know, you're pacing up and down the kitchen and stuff, and obviously you were thinking about this, and then what actually happened, and like I actually stopped and I was like, wow, like this is this, how did it kind of come to this? Um, yeah. Well, if, if, do you want to talk a wee bit more? Do you feel comfortable talking about that? Oh yeah, no, no problem. Like, but it, it's like I obviously that week probably leading up to the whole thing you know it was just probably the mood wasn't good like you know as I say Mm -hmm. it slipped back into a bit of the two or three weeks prior to it it slipped back into a bit of gambling like you know because I'd done so well for about two months and then you just thought oh you're just real frustrated and angry with yourself and then I suppose that I had I had been traveling at that time in Belfast and I just decided to stay up for a couple of nights with with the lads because it was Halloween week and it's a, it was matching off. It was a big week for the students up there in Belfast. And I went up probably, I went up on the Sunday evening. I know, as I say, the form wasn't that great and went up, went out that night, you know, and uh, would talk a couple of drinks, got up that next day, you know, didn't, well, got up that next afternoon because it was just real 
bad form, you know, and yeah, stuff, yes. and didn't re- didn't say anything to anybody, and say the brave face was on, pretending that everything was just okay and was normal, and got up about two or three o'clock that day, got showered, went down again to the pub, and then about about six half six went up home, back up to the house to get ready with the the girlfriend, and she was actually we went into the house, and she was in the room next door so she was doing her makeup and I was in the kitchen by myself and it came probably it was the, the head was just as I say it was banging at that stage it was just ready to explode and whenever you say banging spoke, what do you mean what's what's is like, it, like just, thoughts you know, or I just I real thoughts like you know real like you know serious thoughts of really harming yourself you know and I suppose it's that thing then like you know I was to say, and that like you were walking up and down the kitchen, you nearly, you were now when you look back, you nearly wish that somebody had actually came into the kitchen at the time, like before, yeah. you know, maybe it might have been a different story, but then as I say, when you were pacing up and down, and just you know, the head wasn't clear, there was no real, mm. there's no, there's no thoughts of the, like you know, devastation left behind because you're in that such a black state of thinking, and. Just went to the drawer and picked out the first one. It was like a bread knife, you know, and I put, uh, like pinched it to my stomach, and I knew it wasn't going to do any harm, so I put it down. So the only other knife was like a wee chopping knife, and pinched it, and I knew it was going to go through, and I just kind of stabbed myself with, like, you know, and uh, yeah, yeah. that was it, like, you know, and as I say, probably from then, probably the only real aftermath that I remember of it was like the, you heard the sirens of the ambulance, and like being on a hospital treatment bed, getting surgery on your stomach, like you know. Mm. But it was very, as I say, you look back now, you're very lucky that you never, you like, you probably missed your major arteries, like our organs, by yes, yes, yes. inches, like you yes. know, not even inches. Yes, you know, um, but but it's like you know, I suppose that time then, like you know, you. You woke up that next morning, I suppose, probably thinking, why am I here? Like, you know, you're probably expecting, when you do them things, your your outcome, the outcome was death. Like, you know, are you, whenever you're in that position, are you thinking more what you, you're thinking on what you're thinking yourself? Or are you thinking about what other people are thinking about you? Or what are you, what's going through your head once you're lying there? And you're, stuff, you're thinking, I suppose it's the fact is like, you know, you're just you probably start thinking of like you know why why basically does it have to be me and why is everybody else you know enjoying themselves and like why am I the one that's struggling and right. when why is it you know why am I always in bad form and pros probably the fact is probably mm-hmm. paranoia comes with it too like uh, you know when you're at that stage probably when you chat to ones like you know you start you start thinking about and looking around and you start making situations a lot bigger than they actually are, you know, you, yes. you know, that kind of way. And I suppose it's, it's happens, it happens to a lot of people and mm-hmm. it's um, that kind of thing. But as I say, when you, when you go to that extent, your thing is your, your whole thing is about how much harm you can do to yourself. Like, you know, as yeah. I say, there's no real thought about the devastation of no. friends, family, yeah, yeah, the yeah. community left behind. Like, you know, you're yes. just kind of in that black state of mind that you just really, you want to get you're out of there. Uh, and you're not thinking. Uh, basically, as you say, uh, you're not uh, thinking. You aren't uh, thinking at all. Like, you know, uh, and it, these real, it's kind of nearly impulsive. So it uh, is, you know, and uh, that kind of way. That was your that was your first stunt, and you did uh, come out of that there. How did you find you know recovery and stuff, or did you have good support? Did you go back? What did you do for getting yourself back? So ba- basically, I the next day I woke up in the Royal, like you know, and mm. the medi- or the mental health team came to assess me that day in the Royal, you know, and I suppose when chatting to them, maybe it was a wee bit of me and a wee bit of them. Maybe I wasn't. Like as I say, I woke up that day. There was no real emotion, so there was so I never maybe I held back a wee bit from them. Didn't tell them what was going on, so they maybe weren't able to do as much. But yes, to me, tell me it felt like you know still a t- or like a a young adult shouldn't be stabbing themselves 
in the stomach no matter what and mm-hmm. for me it just felt like they were made me feel like it was kind of normal behavior you know as such you know and really? probably they they sent me kind of on my way to back home that day within about 24 hours and mm-hmm. I got a follow up in Oma you know but there was no real intense like treatment offered you know but as I say probably it was a wee bit of me and a wee bit of them that I didn't open up as much yes. you know but obviously when you chat to other therapists and counsellors probably are amazed that I did still get away within 24 hours after yeah. such the severity of what I'd done to myself what were you keeping back from them? What uh, about the gambling, oh, about the drinking, or what, and how you were actually thinking, or what was you holding back? It was back? probably, I, I probably was the probably, it probably was that they never, nobody ever had um, diagnosed me with depression. You know, that was probably the big thing. Like you know, that's probably like you know, uh, my mood had changed, but nobody had ever said the word to me that you've got depression like you know that kind of way so mm-hmm. it, that kind of way probably it felt to me mm-hmm. like you know is this just normal behavior well is it you know and when you got out of there you know the first week or two everything was grand and things started to be brushed under the carpet again and left alone you know but they really weren't grand you know that yeah. kind of way. and then and it was things, a long way in the, to the next time that you sort of decided to the ne- next time was 8th of December so yeah. it was about a but a period of five, six weeks, like, you know, yeah. you know, that the whole thing had changed. As I say, first couple of weeks was ground, but then things just were starting to slip again, you know, and there was no mm-hmm. change. So there wasn't, an, as I say, just all led up till the second incident again, then on the 8th of December. So it did, which was another, probably, probably was the turning point. So it was. Mm-hmm. And after the first one, though, whenever you're sort of saying it sort of built up again, was there, like, what about your friends or family? Were they kind of, like, I'm not saying, that, what about the support? Or kind of, obviously, people are going to be more aware of what's going on and stuff. But how did, did you feel that anybody was sort of there for you? or? Oh, there was always, oh, I know there was always, there was always people there. But probably yes. my, where myself was, that, as I say, I'd always had the brave face. So yes. always, okay. you know, the manly, it's the manly thing to yes. keep it all to yourself and yeah. bottle it up and keep it away. And I suppose mm-hmm. it's that, you know, it's the GA, uh, it's that GA culture of the hard man dressing room that nobody, you know, nobody wants to show weakness. But yeah. as I always say, there's that, there's, there's weakness and then there's actually being strong, showing your weakness, you know. Yes. So there's, in the, you have to get, now in this today's society anyway like you have to get them to right like you know because mm-hmm. you have to make people feel like they have somewhere to turn to you know even if yeah. it's like a you know even and as i say in ga like you know my now nowadays managers need to be approachable so they do because like you know players want somebody to turn to like and it's now as i said in the article it's now not gone are the days now where when a football match is over, if you're bait that's left in the dressing rooms, it's not. It's brought home with the player and you don't, as I say, you don't know what's going on in that player's head regardless mm-hmm. of the match result. There could be a number of other problems you could be suffering with for, yeah. without having to bring home the defeat of a football match or making a mistake in a football match which leads to yes. a defeat, you know. So yes. it's all like, it's it's very, very... And it could be, as you said, that one one wee mistake, and then there's the managers roaring at them. There's people on the sideline roaring, and it's just maybe that one wee thing that might send them over the edge, or you know, that's a big point there. That's it, because it's see, it's it's the wee, it's the wee things that are. It's like a, it's like a pot. It's like a melting pot. It's the wee mm-hmm. things, and they're all thrown in to the pot, and they're all stirred around, you know, because mm-hmm. and it's just it all adds. Till, yes. It all adds, as I say, till the probably the volcano. It mm-hmm. just adds more and more and more and more. And the way things that wouldn't annoy you are annoying you. Yeah. And that kind of way. And that it just leads up till, as you say, puts somebody out over the edge. Yes. So it does. And um, 
I think from the article that you said there was December 8th, um, you were supposed to do like a 10K or something like that. And uh, you went out in a run by yourself and sort of, you want to talk a wee bit more about that? I so basically it was uh, the Friday night before, uh, just probably the Friday night that week leading up to the game, mood wasn't great, but the Friday night, before, as I say, you just did enough that week to get through it without showing people that there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, and your friend night before me and Jürgen had planned to do, it was a Rudolph run, a 10k, 5k run, and we had planned to do it that Saturday morning, but about that Friday night or by Saturday morning, I'd text her to say that I wasn't, I just wasn't going to do it, I wasn't feeling up to doing it, and I was going to be going out for a run myself, you know, and mm-hmm. I suppose the way I went, went for a run up at Castle Archdale's just to, as a spot up at, um, outside Irvingstown in County Fermanagh and went up there hoping that get a good 30, 35 minute run in the fresh air just by myself with the earphones in that when I came back to the car that clear, everything yeah. would be grand and clear yeah. the head, you know, but as I say, it just wasn't it wasn't clear and then, then that night went out till Sally's nightclub in Oma for a night out, you know and the thing is just the head wasn't, as I say, the head wasn't there. The what are you thinking about? Just, what are you thinking about there? You, you, you naturally are just thinking about, you know, probably, first of all, anyway, trying to get into the night, get the wee bit of drinking, to fall in with the crowd, make sure that nobody's kind of, you know, recognising any symptoms of you being, you know, not yourself, and then plodding on and making the thoughts of trying to, like, just, harm yourself again like right, you know okay. and I suppose it's probably the thing like you know the uh, I had come off a bridge it's the Sacred Heart Bridge over it's the Oma Derry Bypass like you know it's not a bridge that would be walked it's actually only a, a school bridge over for the Sacred Heart College you know yes. and it would never have actually been the plan to um, do it there like you know only that I was on a night out that night and Mm-hmm. Um, I was in Oma and it just was the, kind of the first place that came yes. to your head, you know, yes. which was kind of close, you know. So yeah. that night, you know, I was down in the front bar and it was about, about 12 o'clock and I turned around to the girlfriend and said that I was, just wasn't feeling that up for it and was going home, you know. But she knew just by the whole previous incident that it wasn't myself, you know, and mm-hmm. she had got a kind of incline that there was something not right. And by the time I got out through the front doors and away, she came out after me, but. I was away, gone, and she actually didn't know where it went, and this is right. where I was heading for, you know, and people were starting to ring and text and wanting to know where it was, but you, as I say, you just go back into that state of mind again of blackness, you kind of zone everything else out, and it's just the thought of getting away, like, you know, out of it, mm-hmm. you know, just wanting the pain to stop, so it is. Right, right. Uh, it's, it's, it's... <laughs> I'm just going to take him on it there, man. Just think about that because it's like you could never, I could never really sort of comprehend what you, what that's like or um, what you're kind of going through. Or, um, but see someone like your girlfriend, what would, what do you think the best thing they could do in that situation? You know, um, it's, gonna get it's, to hear. it's, it's hard to know, like, you know, cause it's, it's, it's the fact is that with mental health, a lot of ones have a brave face, as I say. So it's very, very, like, you know, it's, you can't read anybody's mind. No. Nobody can read anybody's mind, not even the, not even the specialist. You mm-hmm. can't read anybody's mind, like, you know, and yeah. I suppose it, com- it c- kind of comes down to yourself nearly in the end to actually probably reach out. And probably a lot of ones see the reaching out as the hard part. You know, it's mm-hmm. the... It's, it's the stigma around mental health that probably kills a lot of people. The, the mm-hmm. thing that they don't want to show their weakness, as I said before, mm-hmm. like, you know, don't want to be shown that they need the help. But as I say, for me, like, there's no shame there. Like, you know, I'm able to admit it. Like, I needed the help. So did, obviously, yeah. I'd, now looking back, you don't want to be going to the extent of where I went. But, yeah. you know, for me, to be, I'm just still happy to be still here, like, and have an hour chance. And pros, that's what gives me now the kind of the the belief and the confidence of sharing my story. 
mm-hmm. to ones to hopefully help them on their ways, like and show yeah. them that you can hit the rock bottom but get back up slowly, you know. Yes. Yes. But as as you say, it's just it's 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 you have no words to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's down to you maybe at the end of the day. Yeah. That's it, you know, when it's probably it's the first steps are always the hardest, but mm-hmm. when you look back, the first steps are always the best, like yeah. so there. Yeah. Um and you actually like to follow on through the article, like you actually went through with it and, and uh went off the bridge yeah. and you were in the end. The next thing you knew you were in Alton the Galvin. At the Galvin um, Hospital and was it, was, it, like, was it similar um sort of thoughts and feelings going through your body and mind then as well after the first time and stuff or probably the difference was that the, probably the difference was, you know, obviously the first day or two or the first couple of days, well, I was there for about three nights, but the difference from there till the Royal was that the motion, you know, the, the damn bust, you know, such, you know, the, the motion started yes. to come out, the, t- okay. the tears started to come out, you know, yeah. and for about them two or three days, the real emotion was shown, and truth, it was nearly the best two or three days of that year, like, you know, because really? just the real, just freedom. Just of of doing it, like you know, it's, that's what I always say, like you know, to people like now, m- men or women, like doing it. If you want to show your emotion, don't be afraid to show because it's one of the best release mechanisms that's out there, like you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I know myself, you know, when when you when you just let it out, because there's too many, there's a lot of people out there that again don't want to show themselves crying. Yeah, because you know, it's obviously everybody sees people's emotion as crying mm-hmm. as a weakness, you know, mm-hmm. that they're, you know, but I say that was probably the total difference from the first time to that time. And I suppose it, I'm glad that it actually happened because you started to chat a lot more. And I, I accepted that I needed the help, you know, yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. you know, the, that's there was no. Part. There was no delusion. There was no saying, mm-hmm. you know, that this just happened for some reason. Mm-hmm. This this happened because I wasn't well, you know, yeah. and I yeah. needed the help, and I needed the experts, you know, and yeah. as I say that, which would probably my therapists and counselors would always say to me, which was powerful, that I was actually able to hold up my own hands and say that I needed the help, you know. So it is. Mm-hmm. And then, um, like. Did you find of the the next recovery process you, you went to Grand Chan stuff was that was that better was it different was it you know um, what was your thoughts on that second time and the recovery oh, process I actually like the I had said in Anthony Galvin basically that like I wasn't leaving until I I wanted at that stage I wanted to go somewhere where you actually could get a proper medical assessment you know and going probably when I was told that by the mental health team that they were going to admit me into Grantia and Derry, like, you know, I was actually kind of glad because I promised myself then at that stage that I was, when I went in there, that I was going to give my all and actually just let it all out because mm-hmm. as a new, you knew when you were going in there that the experts were in there. There was nothing knew that they weren't going to, you know, you weren't going to shock them or anything. Yes, you know, yes. Nothing, nothing I said that they hadn't heard before and that's what it turned out to be and it was so just it was so comforting and like you know as I said in the in the article like you know it's, I always said like Grant will always be forever in the heart because it was one of the places that had, if not the first place that kick started the recovery yeah, of the yeah, well-being because yeah. once you went in there you're made feel welcome you know you, you know, they were never, you know, they were never panicking you. The chat was all in your own time, you know, and mm-hmm, it was mm-hmm. just, you were safe, you know, as such uh, too. And you got, you got that wee bit of time to switch off from the outside. Everything, just, yes. That's it. Just, I like, I only stayed there for a week from the 10th of December to the 17th of December, but it was probably one of the best weeks of my life in 2019 because it gave mm-hmm. me the full, probably recharged and needed. And mm-hmm. being in there too, you got the coping mechanisms that taught yes. you, you know, how to deal with this, with the, like, you know, because me coming out of there, I knew there wasn't, every day wasn't going to be rosy. There's yes, going to be yes, still yes. bad days. Everybody gets them, but it's mm-hmm. the coping mechanisms that I got in there that really benefited me for the awesome. future. Like. 
Brilliant, man. Um, I'm glad it's, that it's working out for you then too. Uh, um, you, did, was it January then you got the third up? Was it recently there this year? Was it just uh, the third up? Ja- just January, uh, <laughs> Jan- January fourteenth. So uh, it was it was a uh, it was right and extensive, like you know. So it was mm-hmm. basically as he said, like uh, I was up with him about two or three weeks ago for a six or seven week review. He basically said he. <laughs> He put both screws, straps, everything he could into the knee, like, you know, it's kind of, he's throwing everything he could at it, like, you know, good, but good. it's, um, you know, you're, like, as I, like, we're only starting the third rehab, but you're such a far better place as to where you're the second rehab, and there's no, yes. no, I suppose it's the expectations, you know, as I go back to, like, the GA thing and more, like, you know, you're expected to, you know, make that return to football, and yeah. I suppose everybody, when everybody's asking you how you're getting on, they're asking you in that form of when are you going to be back to playing. They're actually not yeah. asking you how is it mentally affecting you, mm-hmm. and the mental side is the major part of it. You know, yeah. which is it. It was it's the big thing. Like as I say, yeah. you know, it's the it's the mentally coping with it, and just you know the total difference now you have is you're just complete relax. You know, if yes. you want to take a couple of days off you can because yeah. there's no rush with it so yes. it doesn't you reckon you'll never you'll probably won't go back to play Gaelic or what's your thoughts or? it's 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 a hard to know it's a it's a tough one to call like you know it's yes. at the at the minute at the minute for me like I mean I, you wouldn't even think about it me and my physio there like we do it's one to one every week you know and mm-hmm. like we wouldn't as he said like you know there's no real mention of it like you know we haven't really set any goals of any return because we don't it's it's a far away it's enough yes. it's, uh, it's, it's long year. enough away yet yes yeah. as you say Basically, uh, and at, as I say like as we me and him would have said like you know it's about embracing the journey enjoying yes. this journey yeah. and enjoying the, enjoying the time you've been given you know if that means like you know going away on a holiday for two weeks over the yeah. summer if, if if we get a summer like but yes. um you know, being able to do things like that, just switching off and relaxing, like, you know, because funny enough there, the first, actually after the first, I'd went away with the girlfriend to crack off at the middle of February and at that week, I'd done really very little with the knee and it was the, probably the first week that the knee had actually came on the most itself, mm-hmm. like, you know, without without doing much with it. So it just shows yes. you when you're switched off, and not thinking recovery, about it yes. much, it, it there's a lot of natural recovery till it yes. too. So and rest, rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. You know, because I say like you ha- you have the time if it's you know we as I say there's no time set like you know if it takes fifteen months, sixteen yeah. months, whatever like you know. But at the minute, there's no the immediate future like you know there's definitely no okay. returning like because but that's good. you just don't know. Yeah, yeah. We'll play up a year, sure, and we'll we'll see. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, that's it. I want to just ask you, just to finally, just kind of having a wee end note is, um, if you can, in a couple of minutes, like, what's your outlook like now? What's your mindset like? What would be your advice for other players going through similar things? What, what would you, cause kind, of, kind of as a final note? Probably, it's, I, like, it's, it's, it's a hard one, you know, because, like, I, you know, we're all different. We're all, mm. you know, we're unique, like, you know, we all act in different ways. But I suppose the fact is, like, you know, the injuries, you know, probably with the injuries and returning to sport, take, like, just take your time, like, you know, even if it's a, if it's not a year-long injury, but just always take your time, give yourself plenty of time, make sure you're definitely right, you know, that your head and mind and all, you're mentally well. Because I would have found, like, you know, if you weren't like if you were thinking about it too much it was going to happen you know that kind of way if you're thinking that you were right. going to get injured again it, it actually happened but as I say taking the, the time the time is key like you know giving and giving yourself plenty of time and, and rest and re- relaxing because you know I would have like football's not everything as you see as, as you see even at the present time like you know with the whole this whole coronavirus, like, you know, which has cost a lot of lives, like, you know, football, you know, when you're bogged down it, yes, mm. sport is everything to a lot of people, yeah. but when you, when you see things like this, 
that are happening in the world, there's a lot, lot more to it. And life's a lot more important and being happy in life. And as I say, like, if for me, like at the minute, the injuries were making me unhappy with the sport. So stepping away from the sport mm -hmm. has made me a lot more happy and yes. healthier. You know, so it's all, it's about probably that thing about doing what's right for you, not mm -hmm. what's right for somebody else or what yes. somebody else tells you. You know, mm -hmm. do what makes you happy, like, you know, and you should hopefully, you know, if you're happy and content, you know, nobody else matters as such. Fucking brilliant, man. You couldn't, you couldn't have put it better uh, than that, play, to be fair. Uh, that was a great way to kind of to finish that off because no three or words in that. Like, you know, you just do it at your own pace. Do it what makes you happy. I think that's great advice for anybody out there. Um, yes. Um, look, man, it has been an amazing chat with you. And I, I thank you for taking the time to kind of talk to me. And I hope somebody out there listening to this here will take that initiative to, to talk to somebody or not feel ashamed about what their thoughts or feelings are and uh, really take a leaf out of your book and kind of come back from the, the yes. episode. So uh, thank you very much, buddy. No bother, Seamus. Thank you for having me on the show. And as I say, just as you say, like, you know, it's, it's that thing, which is probably the wee final part, you know, Always, it's always that it's never like we were always told in Grantia, it like you know it's that saying of you know the it maybe like you know maybe stormy now but it never rains forever and that was always a quote that I Stop taken with, with me you know so like you know as I say if it benefits anybody hopefully they can take something out of it brilliant buddy uh, brilliant um, look I'll Get speaking to you again. I'll just stop the recording and stuff now, but uh, thank you very much. All right, no bother. Uh,